start with our first speaker, Robert Martinson. He's from uh, his CTO from Enlight, and um, I found very impressive. He has two master's degrees in uh, mechanical engineering and also in electrical and ocean engineering. And uh, he works now for Enlight since 2004, and uh, he will give us a great presentation about uh, beam shaping and laser powder bit fusion. Thanks. Thanks so much for the introduction. And um, so, yeah, Rob Martinson, CTO of Enlight. And, you know, I've been involved in product development for so many years. And it's, it's interesting to reflect back on um, the cycles of innovation. And, you know, here we're going to be talking about a technology that, you know, happens every few years where you get this step function change in, in performance and cost that's uh, really exciting and uh, it, it can change the market that we um, sell these products into. So I hope through this talk I, I get to um, you know, convince you of the, the importance of this beam shaping technology and how it's implemented uh, by Enlight. So the outline of my talk, I'm going to uh, start with a very brief introduction and um, also you know, talk about the importance of beam control, but then go straight into the three factors that I'm gonna highlight. It's uh, process stabilization, productivity, and material property enhancements. And then collectively, you know, I, I will summarize by the economic benefits of these three advances in, uh, that, that beam control brings to the powder bed fusion market and with some concluding remarks. So, um, advancements in spatial beam control. We're talking about, again, these three important parameters. We need to have, uh, start with a more stable process than what currently exists in powder bed fusion today, which is, as everyone knows, is, is very familiar with powder bed fusion, is a, a single mode laser that is um, uh, always managed to prevent uh, severe keyholing in the, in the melting of powder and then you know all the associated uh, uh, instabilities that creates by having a deep keyhole weld. So we're always trying to back off on the process and uh, try to invoke a, a more conduction weld into the, uh, into the process. But once you have a stable process, then you can talk about enhancing the productivity gain from your machine tool. Um, what I'm going to talk about today also is how this uh, beam shaping technology can also not only lead to equivalent material properties, but perhaps even improved material properties than what the whole community is familiar with, with single mode lasers. Um, yeah, ultimately, this all translates into the economic benefits of an additive, additively manufactured part in terms of its cost. So Enlight's footprint uh, in, in, in additive market, we have a, a global reach that spans uh, uh, many, many customers around the world. But one important point I wanna make here is the research network that we have, that we've created for the powder bed fusion market. Researchers around the world have been able to create a lot of um, you know, publicly available data that uh, is really, we're trying to push out to the broader community to help raise uh, the level of understanding of what can be done with this new technology. Okay, so when we talk about Enlight Additive, we're talking about uh, lasers that are really built for not just research pieces of, mach uh, of equipment, but machines that are used for series production output. So that requires uh, machines that are, are very uh, reliable, that have long-term stability, and um, have reproducible results. And they can do this um, in a way to offer uh, lower cost for additively manufactured metal parts. So properties of beam control, power stability, and then control over this heat source in both the time domain and, the, and this new capability to have control over this heat source in the spatial domain. And this is what we're gonna highlight here. 
So the lasers that we have out in the market today, you know, there's a standard single mode laser product up to 1200 watts of output. But then we also created uh, a new platform of DC powered modules that are really compact, that are truly um, optimized for uh, improved integration, control, and serviceability of multi-laser machines that are used for series production. The laser that I'm going to talk about mostly here is the way to uh, implement beam control that's all in fiber. We're not talking about a laser that uh, is then illuminating some free space optics to do this beam control or beam shaping function. All this comes out of the laser, which makes it uh, very simple, very repeatable, and um, you'll see the results of what this technology can, can bring. So let's start, start off with talking about the stabilization of the uh, current process. As everyone knows, with um, uh, single mode lasers are super important for um, producing the smallest resolvable spot size at a long working distance through your scanning beam delivery system. The problem is, is that this, 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 this shape of a Gaussian distribution of intensity is really undesirable from a heating perspective, right? So if you don't need to um, produce a smallest focusable spot size to print tiny features, then the last thing that you want to be dealing with is a Gaussian distribution of intensity. So, um, and, and the reason for this, of course, is because the, uh, the intensity sitting at the center of the footprint of the beam leads to superheating and all the things that, you know, conspire to high vapor pressures that lead to spatter and um, undesirable, you know, uh, voids and um, other issues. This is evident, everyone's seen, you know, the sparks, the spatter that comes off a single mode process. You, you really have to process engineers that are working the DOE to figure out a process window or trying to manage how far they can push the intensity, how far they can push the, uh, the productivity of this, this beam without, um, you know, high uh, defect rates for voiding. In contrast, what you're gonna be, t uh, what we're talking about here is producing a ring distribution of heat flux, where the intensity distribution is distributed along the perimeter of the footprint of the beam rather than peaked at the center. And uh, what's striking about this technology is just the clear difference in the nature of the, of the melt pool and the nature of the resulting track width and, 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 tr and uh, melt depth of these, of these uh, lasers. And this is described very simply because, um, you know, uh, the temperature that's produced, the temperature profile that's produced by these beams, whether it's Gaussian or flat top, if you still have um, heat in the center of these beams, you still end up with a peaky temperature distribution underneath the footprint of these beams. And that leads to um, resolidified material that um, can produce balling uh, if you try to push productivity of the single mode beams. And, um, you can see from the characteristics of the ring distribution of intensity, you get this beautiful uh, high aspect ratio, shallow melt, but large area uh, melt. So you can Im increase hatch distances, and, um, and what we're gonna talk about here is the ma magnification of a factor of three between the ring distribution and the single mode output of these lasers that's also available. So you can switch between the single mode where you need it, where you need to produce fine features, and then the ring distribution of power where you need to just look for productivity and stable process. Here's further evidence of the stable process. The top image is a standard single mode laser running side by side um, with a, a ring beam of intensity running the same part, same process in parallel with the, uh, the, the soot and spatter that's coming off the, the upper process is pretty evident. And this data was provided by uh, the team at Econity 3D in Aachen, Germany. This is all really explained very simply by um, you know, the nature of the evaporation pressure at the center of the melt pool that's created uh, when you have a peak of intensity sitting at the middle of these beams, right? And that causes high velocities of melt pool and uh, high surface tension pressure. In stark contrast to that is the lower velocities by a factor of five of, um, uh, of the melt pool. 
and the uh, lower evaporation pressure and distribution of surface tension pressure. So this leads us to the productivity discussion. And so we all know the reason why productivity is such a hot topic in powder bed fu fusion today is because it's directly related to the cost of the additively manufactured part. People try to push productivity by increasing the count of lasers in their machine, increasing the power of those lasers in the machine, or introducing beam shaping optics, um, or I should say uh, zoom beam expanders or other free space optics to transform the shape of these Gaussian beams into something else. Um, so what we're gonna talk about here is doing, having all that function, functionality buried in the laser so it's simple, it's stable, and it's repeatable. And this it just speaks to uh, you know, the argument for why you need to have a full palette of uh, paintbrushes, if you will, rather than just having the fine point paintbrush because we're all dealing with parts that have a mixture, a, a, a blend or distribution of features, fine features and bulky uh, features. So why limit the tool to the finest feature have a, have a laser that can provide that uh, fine feature output as well as the more productive um, ring output. And so this is what, um, you know, this is a, a quick animation of the light that comes right out of the uh, collimator of these AFX lasers. And we have, we can switch between um, seven beam profiles from single mode Gaussian, true single mode Gaussian, uh, 14 micron core output to uh, three times the diameter of a ring output. And so that's kind of summarized here what these ring distributions look like. We preset these ring distributions at the factory so they're, they're quickly selectable and they can be uh, selected on the fly without having to turn the laser on and off um, uh, in a 20, 20 millisecond time frame. Um, so, and I should probably go back to here. The, the image on the far left, we call that index zero, the TEM00 single mode output of the laser. Index six is when we try to push all the, la all the laser power into the ring waveguide shown on the far right. So when you compare, and this data was provided um, by our friends at the IAPT, Fraunhofer and Hamburg, um, and, and materialized on a project where they compared the process windows as measured by hatch distance on the vertical axis and scan speed on the horizontal axis for uh, Gaussian beam output uh, on the left and two ring mode settings in the middle and the, and the right. And you can see just the expansion of viable process windows as is defined by printing um, uh, high quality material, meaning in this case, material that has densities exceeding 99.8%. Further evidence of the stability of this process was showed by, by, by Tim Launch at the ILT. And again, we're not just talking about printing material really fast, um, but printing high quality material really fast. And all these, um, so these are the buildup rates quoted here from 16 cubic centimeters per hour to 40 cubic centimeters per hour, all at the 99.9% .9 density. So let's talk a little further about material properties. Um, what we're learning right now is the reason for, for uh, some of the characteristics of uh, you know, improved uh, physical properties of the material that's produced by this, um, these lasers is really explained by the geometry of the melt pool difference between a Gaussian distributed uh, intensity profile interacting with material, creating a geometry that's much more, um, uh, let's just say, less flat aspect ratio than the, um, uh, the, the ring mode patterns that's shown on the right. And so it's the geometry of the melt pool, not so much the solidification temperature gradient or the cooling rates that's dictating the improved material properties, but rather the, the, in the resolidification process, we're learning that the microstructure is highly oriented in the case of these ring beams. Again, further evidence that you get uniform heating of the melt pool that creates uh, a, a, 
a shallow, flat bottom of the mouth pole where the grain structure solidifies in a very uniform orientation relative to the crashing direction that's shown by uh, the EBSD images on the left by a Gaussian beam. Uh, the team at Econity further uh, uh, evaluated the material properties, how this microstructure translates into physical properties. And it's quite striking, right? For uh, percent elongation, almost a doubling of the ductility of the material that's uh, provided by these ring beams relative to uh, Gaussian beams. Rather, you know, and this is true, whether it's a, a defocused Gaussian beam or um, a focused spot. So, um, the ultimate strength and hardness, maybe more, um, uh, you know, less contrast in, in improvement of material properties, but it's, it's at least better, it's at least the same or a little better than what's produced by uh, these Gaussian beams. But one thing I'd like to point out here is the, the, the variance that comes out of even just one build plate of parts you see the, the, the distribution, the variance, the standard deviation of, of distribution for the ring mode settings on all these properties is very, very uh, 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 much reduced relative to the, the Gaussian distributed you know, material interactions. Okay, how, how does all this translate into the economics of, a, of an AM part? So the, um, I'm gonna move this along quickly. Uh, so the cost of an additively manufactured part is you know, highly dependent on many factors, but the most important factor, of course, is the, the time to build a part. So if you can reduce the time to build a part, in this case, for this example, we have the part um, that can produce the same part instead of 20 hours, four hours, and you can uh, reduce the cost of this part by almost a, th uh, uh, a third of its original cost. Now, when you take this technology and you think about integrating this technology into multi-laser machine tools, um, how does this compare? For standard single-mode lasers, when you try to push productivity of machines by adding more lasers in them, you, you generally have a, a notional um, kind of cost curve that looks like this, that illustrates the diminishing um, uh, return on investment uh, due to the complexity of having multi -laser, uh, la multiple lasers working in concert together. All, of course, this runs up against an asymptotic um, uh, fixed cost of cost of the powder, the time to recoat. So any advances in the cost of powder and recoating time is going to reduce the, the threshold of which you can asymptote to. Compare that to AFX. And here's what I'm talking about for a step function in, in performance. One AFX laser can produce, uh, can provide the productivity that um, is, this, is equivalent to many more lasers of just the same power. So we're talking about the same one kilowatt power, one kilowatt laser in both examples. It's just the redistribution of intensity. It's a more efficient melting of material that's producing this this part. So we're not adding more kilowatts to your machine tool. We're not adding more lasers to your machine tool. But you can take advantage of this with um, engineering multi-laser machine tools at um, uh, you know uh, improved uh, you know uh, or simplicity and improved complexity. So just to summarize, what we're talking about here is. Um, you know, building real high quality material at like half the cost, or maybe at least half the cost of what they are today with um, uh, single mode lasers, legacy single mode lasers. We're talking about um, high quality material printing really, really fast. And so, you know, this one kilowatt laser technology from Enlight called the AFX, it's really the only laser of its kind that can produce that's the standard single mode output and then switch to these much more productive ring beams to just improve productivity, create a more stabilized process and produce very, very high quality material. And you know, ultimately, we believe this technology offers a considerably simplified approach to reducing the cost of an additively manufactured part um, rather than just adding more and more kilowatt legacy lasers. That's my talk, thank you.